Hi, I'm Sarah Grant. I go to Battle High School, part of Columbia Public High Schools. And I'm here to talk about the possibilities with genetic engineering and Pokemon. Let's bring some nostalgia into this. What if, using genetic technology, bioengineers created Pokemon in real life? They took in the things from our childhood and created things from our dreams. Things like Pikachu and Raichu and Pichu. And I'm just listing different forms of Pikachu. Oh well. <laughs> Pokemon is an RPG-based video game, as well as a continuing plot of a television show, a series of movies, a card game, and a manga. Basically, it's just a massive empire of never-ending stuff. The game is based on the concept of insect collecting, which the creator, Shatoshi, enjoyed as a child. The objective is to capture and train teachers, creatures called Pokemon. They're anthropomorphic beings that have different powers and strengths in order to be the very best, like no one ever was. Game players and the characters in the canon storyline start from humble beginnings at the age of 10 with a single level five Pokemon, and they train towards greatness. Go. Okay, why? Things to ponder. Is the creation and use of these creatures ethical? Is current genetic technology up to par in creating any of the Pokemon's thousands we remember from childhood? If we utilize strange animal powers, can we create our own varieties of Pokemon-like creatures? How can the aspects of pure whimsy in Pokemon be approached and conceptualized into reality? What concepts are impossible? In the future, can, preposition on the word, can the preposition on the word be removed? Meaning possible. <laughs> A big part of Pokemon is the idea of evolution, and evolution is what drives the Pokemon. All the strange powers nature, ha nature have come from the mechanism of defense. That's why there are so many unusual animals in the world, and that is what we would have to harness in order to create things like Pokemon. For instance, I decided to try to make one. This was my attempt at making a Pikachu. It took me days to plan, so creating all of the Pokemon would be very difficult. For physical traits, the body type would be that of a dormouse, as, long as, as well as the eyes. The tail and ears would come from the tufts and shapes of the Pichu, yes, that is a real rodent, the kangaroo mouse, and the squirrel. The coloration from the lowland tinrec, a really weird looking animal, but its colors are right. The abilities in the attacks would come from the oriental hornet DNA for electric cheat pouches, the honey badger, yes, honey badger, superior fighting skills, electric eel DNA, to also to create the, increase the potency the potency of the electricity, the shrew DNA to make him venomous because Pikachu can do some poison attacks, and jellyfish DNA for bioluminescence to be used as flash when you're in caves. The thing is, controlling the animals would be difficult, but with mice, it's fairly easy. So you could either train through practice and reinforcement, positive or negative, or control with brain electrodes, which though controversial, is more certain it will work, even in a sad way. In order to create these things, we'd be harnessing Mother Nature's powers. Creating Pokemon would involve harnessing usual powers of those with the like of the hairy frog, which is a frog that literally breaks its leg bones and then stabs them through its hands and uses them to fight off predators. It's like a weird wolverine of the animal world. And then there's the Bombardier beetle, which, ex well, it expels boiling hot liquid through its anus. Just gonna be straight with you. The octopus. And the octopus is just crazy. It can change colors. Some of them get into coconut shells and pretend to be coconuts and crawl on land. Yes, octopi can get on land. You should be scared. <sighs> and they can shrink through tiny holes. Exploding termite, it explodes and spews toxic liquid all over the predators around it to protect the others of its kind and the mantis shrimp. The, the mantis shrimp not only is brightly colored and has insanely fast claws that can cause water around it to boil at thousands of kelvins, just the mere motion of their arm can kill its prey, but it also can see with 16 different color cones in its eyes. It can see millions of colors humans could never perceive. It's just kind of a weird animal. But there are limitations to our real world. Pokemon, because it is fictional, it makes a lot of the creatures impossible. Often the designs are drawn from mythos and legend, creating fantastical, beastly creatures that we can't create, like carps that become dragons. Magikarp, I know you don't like him, but whatever. And he becomes Gyarados, and nine-tailed foxes that harness the powers of fire. Science couldn't dream of these until we can create unusual mythical creatures that we've been dreaming of for hundreds of years. This kind of over-idealizing is similar for inanimate object Pokemon and the concept of Pokeballs in the traveling home of the Pokemon. 
the impossible, objects in crazy Pokemon. There are Pokemon that regardless of advances will never truly exist. These are the inanimate object Pokemon. 10.45% of Pokemon fall in this category. And there's also some hope for all the plant Pokemon, but it'd be difficult to get them to have, well, a working conscience that we know of, because we don't really know about plants. They're kind of weird. Also, some Pokemons have abilities that we cannot harness, like psychic abilities and fire, because this is not Avatar the Last Airbender. We don't have firebenders. It's terrible, but it's true. Pokeballs and blowing up the sun. To contain a Pokemon in such a small container would require mass to energy conversion because there are some Pokemon that are like way bigger than Mr. Lutchman, and he's a big guy. You would not want to carry him around. You're gonna have to turn him into energy. And for small Pokemon, that still creates more than enough energy to, well, more than thousands of nuclear bombs. Let's do the math. One Pokemon, Pokeball capable of capturing Pikachu would convert him into 5.392531072 times 10 to the 17th joules. One thermal nuclear warhead has 4.184 times 10 to the 9th joules, meaning one Pokemon is equivalent to one, that of 1,028,884,585.9 uh, warheads. 15,000 warheads could blow up the Earth. One Pokeball could blow up 8,592.30527 Earths, meaning about 151 Pokeballs could blow up our sun. Ironically, 151 is the original number of Pokemon, meaning if we attempt to create and capture just the originals, we would end up blowing up the sun if just one thing went wrong and all die. That's terrifying. Battle. Because Pokemon's basis is fighting and then the winner receives money, it's in a lot of ways similar to dog and cock fighting rings, very sadly. This is something that has been pointed out by multiple organizations who think the, that the entire game glorifies animal fighting, like PETA, with their very sad, satirical flash game, Pokemon, black and blue. <laughs> genetic manipulation, right or wrong? Also, genetic manipulation is something that is of high debate because it is so strange and unusual. The idea of crossing animals that would never naturally meet in nature irks people. For instance, there is the spider goat creation, which creates a strong fiber that's stronger than spider silk because it also has the strength of goat milk, and this super fiber, though very useful, is considered very wrong. No one wants to co combine arachne and capra because the idea of breeding a goat and a spider and those two engaging in coitus is just frightening. It's terrifying. <sighs> There's also worry that the, pop, the manipulation possibly results in long-term harm and effects that are often associated with things like genetically modified foods. Societal structure changes. The integration of Pokemon into our regular society and modern technology, the foundation of our society currently, would result in semi-pastoral structures. Because Pokemon, which would involve technology to be created, would then be associated with technology, meaning we would be pastoral like that of the people of the Neolithic Revolution, only with a little bit of a change. It's like a twist on the past, rather than repeating it. Pikachu, Pokeballs, limits, ethics, possibilities, and what all of it means. The addition of the pastoral elements would forge a new age of technology and society, one more bold than the Industrial Revolution. The addition of these limitless creatures would usher in an age of technological evolution and literal evolution, mightier than that of all other human advances, the time of evolutionary society.